Should we care more about AI model welfare? Thanks to a new upgrade, Claude from Anthropic can now end what it considers abusive or harmful conversations. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off the day with an interesting one. Anthropic has updated the safety features for Claude Opus, allowing it to terminate certain conversations. Basically, in the consumer chat interface, Opus 4 and 4.1 will now be able to end conversations. Now, Anthropic said that this ability was reserved for, quote, rare, extreme cases of persistently harmful or abusive user interactions. They said the feature was developed as part of their, quote, exploratory work on potential AI welfare, though it has broader relevance to model alignment and safeguards. Anthropic said that this wasn't strictly about preventing harmful use, but also about protecting the model itself. In pre-deployment testing of Claude Opus 4, we included a preliminary model welfare assessment. As part of that assessment, we investigated Claude's self-reported and behavioral preferences and found a robust and consistent aversion to harm. In testing, the model would display, quote, apparent distress when engaging with harmful content and had, quote, a tendency to end harmful conversations when given the ability to do so in simulated user interactions. Now, as you might imagine, this has kicked up quite the conversation around whether AI model welfare is actually even a thing. Some tried to better understand the implications while others had just had enough. Anonymous developer Banteg wrote, Model welfare is not a real thing. Stop anthropomorphizing language models. Lefteris Carapesta said, This sounds more like a feature trying to stop people from trying to jailbreak a convo to get into forbidden behavior? Question mark. James B. wrote, Giving a model the ability to end a conversation in rare abusive cases is a sensible safety valve. Framing it as model welfare is provocative and risks confusing people about what today's systems actually experience, which is nothing. Use it as a narrow, transparent moderation tool, not as evidence that models feel distress. The pros, he writes, reduces endless abuse loops and prevents models from being steered into harmful content. Also creates a clear boundary that can improve safety for miners and casual users. And if logged well, it can surface valuable red team signals about where policies break. The risks, however, include phrases like distress or welfare assessment misleading the public into thinking the model suffers. Today's models generate text. They don't have experiences. Now, whether you agree with any of this or not, it's likely to be more of a conversation in the future and one I will certainly keep an eye on. Interestingly, when the AI Safety Memes account asked Elon Musk to, quote, help set a good example and move the Overton window by giving Grok a quit button too, Elon responded, okay. Moving on now to the much more knowable part of the headlines. OpenAI's secondary share sale is coming together and it's shaping up to be a major liquidity event. Bloomberg reports that current and former OpenAI employees plan to sell $6 billion in stock to an investor group that includes Thrive, SoftBank, and Dragoneer. Sources said the round will value OpenAI at $500 billion. Validating a 60% jump in valuation from the SoftBank-led round consummated at the beginning of the year. If it goes through, that valuation would make OpenAI the world's most valuable startup overtaking SpaceX. This is also quite possibly the largest single secondary sale in history. Now, a few other observations from the reporting. First, existing shareholders cannot get enough money into OpenAI and seem eager to take part in every new allocation. All three of the major investors in this secondary have been heavy participants in previous rounds, and they're still looking to deploy billions more. Secondly, this round is going to transform many OpenAI employees from multimillionaires on paper to wealthy in real cash terms. Many wonder then, could that have an impact on the company's retention strategy, especially with other AI labs still poaching from their roster? Whatever happens next, the company is definitely now playing in the big leagues. At a $500 billion valuation, if they were public, that would make them something like the 20th biggest company in the world. Speaking of AI investor enthusiasm, it apparently is not just at the foundation model layer, as Vercel is now fielding unsolicited investment offers at a $9 billion valuation. The company last raised money 18 months ago at a $3 billion valuation, but has of course been a big beneficiary of the vibe coding boom. The company is currently getting 76% gross margins for what is effectively a cloud services company. Overall, it's clear that investors are hungry for AI investments wherever they can get them. Lastly today, the latest out of Meta. According to the information, the company is planning on their fourth restructuring effort so far this year. This time, the focus is on reorganizing the new superintelligence team. Sources said that the team will be divided into four groups. The TBD lab, presumably a secret projects group with goals yet to be determined a products team that will take over responsibility for the Meta AI Assistant, among other projects, an infrastructure team presumably dealing with the increasingly complex build-out of Meta's gigantic new data centers, and the fundamental AI research or FAIR lab focused on long-term research. Now, the changes haven't been announced internally and could still change, 
but it seems like the goal is to provide a clear divide between pure research and shipping teams. One thing I will note is that while the reporting has this as their fourth restructuring effort in six months, kind of implying that even though superintelligence is just up and running, it's already in trouble, it kind of feels more to me like the major restructuring was the creation of the superintelligence lab in the first place to house all of their AI efforts, and this is just the natural division of that company that was always going to get decided on. Maybe that's not the case that it's more chaotic internally than I'm assuming, but I'm sure we'll learn more as things get up and running. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.